Let's examine the thermal envelope and see how it can affect both energy consumption and comfort. The term thermal envelope refers to a home's ability to control the movement of heat, both into and out of the house. You see, heat always moves from hot to cold. So in the wintertime, the heat inside your home wants to move to the cold outside. In the summer, the heat outside wants to penetrate the cooler temperatures inside your home. Well, the thermal envelope can act as an insulated barrier that can slow down this heat transfer and save a lot of wasted energy. To check out your home's thermal envelope, let's start up here at the top, in the attic. Now remember to use extreme caution when you're moving around up here. You only want to step on the ceiling joists or on the boards that you've placed carefully over those joists. Otherwise, you could end up falling right through your ceiling. Okay, you want to take a measuring stick or a tape measure, and you want to measure the depth of your insulation. If it's laid down in bats, it should measure between 9.5 to 10.5 inches. If insulation is blown in fiberglass, it should measure between 13 and 14 inches. And if it's cellulose, make it about 8 inches in depth. And that's in keeping with an R value of 30. What's an R value? Well, it's a unit of measurement designed to define your insulation's ability to resist heat transfer. The higher the R value, the better. Now, blown-in insulation should also be spread very evenly throughout your attic. It shouldn't be clumped together in piles. It should also completely cover the joists. Never let storage items compress the insulation. And remember, the cost of adding insulation could always be paid back to you in the future in the form of lower utility bills. Attic ventilation also plays an important role in the envelope. A well-ventilated attic does a couple of things. Number one, in the wintertime, it helps to reduce condensation buildup. Condensation can actually cause your insulation to lose its insulating properties, and wet or damp conditions up here can actually cause the attic structure itself to rot. And secondly, a well-ventilated attic helps improve airflow during the summertime, when heat transfer can occur into your home. Well, a well-ventilated attic helps reduce that heat buildup. To evaluate your attic's ventilation, you'll need to look around for some features on your roof. Now, what you should look for is actually a combination of both low or intake ventilation and high or exhaust ventilation. One source of intake ventilation is soffit vents, which can be found underneath overhangs. To check your attic's exhaust ventilation, look for flat vents positioned high on the roof, or look for a continuous ridge vent along the peak of the roof. Gables, which are these grill-like vents, are another source of ventilation. Okay. Let's move from the attic and roof to the living area of your home. Heat transfer here can take place between doors and windows, and that can have an impact on your thermal envelope. Here you want to check for any gaps or crevices along your doors or windows. And they can be easily repaired with caulk or weather stripping, and that'll help tighten your thermal envelope and reduce annoying and costly drafts in the process. If you have a fireplace in your home, make sure you close the damper when it's not in use. And glass doors, like these, can also reduce air infiltration from the chimney. Now, there are plenty of other low-cost and very simple ways that you can improve your home's thermal envelope. You can install gaskets made of foam behind light switches and outlets in your walls. And use a spray foam sealant to plug holes around pipes in bathrooms and kitchen cabinets.